Hey, how's it going? I'm Derek Kirk of Effective Sean, and today I'm going to show you how to use Quixel assets or whatever asset you want to grow on and control it, how it grows on, and have it grow across multiple objects. Super easy setup, really easy to do, and it makes some really cool looking effects. Like if we pause this right here, go ahead and go to Redshift Render View, take a look at what this is going to look like. It's going to render quick and everything for us. Now, I use Redshift for this, and I use the Matrix Scatter, the RS Matrix Scatter. But to do this effect, you do not have to have Redshift. You can do this with Octane, you can do this with Physical Render whatever you just have to use a cloner instead but i mean look how look how good that looks i mean quicksoul is insane if you need to know how to set up quicksoul with redshift 3.5 uh there's actually a guy his name's steven or stefan i'm not sure but i've got a link to his youtube video and tutorial uh in the description below it's like two minutes long and he shows you how to set it up there's basically a patch on the redshift forums you need to install and overwrite your folder so check that out all right, let's go ahead and get into this because it's super cool looking and super easy to use and it really fast. And man, just look how cool that looks on the railing there. That's my favorite part. Okay, let's get started. Let's get started on how to create this tutorial. And before we jump right in, let's go ahead and talk about just upcoming stuff. Exciting things are happening. Uh, the Mind in Motion Interactive 3D and Redshift Cinema 40 Workshop is still in the works. It's coming along nicely. It's going to be huge, guys. It's going to be awesome. Um, it's very project heavy based. If you've taken my Redshift Ultimate Redshift Masterclass, that was kind of more of a dictionary style learning, which there's a place for. Uh, where it says this is what this does this is what this does um, but that's not my favorite style of teaching and definitely not my favorite style of learning so i'm creating a course it's a lot more interactive there's going to be feedback there's going to be questions and it's going to be very project based think of it like a hundred detailed youtube tutorials versus like here's what this does watch me do this it's it's you're going to be creating something in almost every single video you're going to have a portfolio that you're gonna be cutting things out of because you have so much by the time it's done, okay? It's gonna be awesome. And then also coming soon, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell uh, as well, you know, the normal YouTuber things to say, but we're gonna have a multi-part tutorial coming up we're using Kitbash, Redshift, and Quixel, and as well as how to go ahead and we're gonna talk about something I don't normally do, which is kind of the concept and ideas behind creating something and then uh, also how to do it from scratch. And then we're also going to team up with CG Hacks. Justin is going to help show you how to take your renders from Redshift and Cinema 40, take them into Photoshop, and we're going to go over how to make them look amazing because he is an awesome, awesome at that. And I am not. So I'm going to be learning as well as we do that. But it's going to be a real cool cooperative collab. So be sure to be uh, subscribed and have those notifications on for when that comes out soon. All right, y'all, let's get started. Let's start with a completely blank scene and go ahead and create our dome light. We're going to go to Redshift Light, Dome Light, or you could do it down here uh, as well. And we wanted to use a nice HDRI texture for this. Now, we could use some for the Asset Browser, but there's a really cool website I love to use called polyhaven.com. It has all kinds of cool free assets. Go ahead and check out their HDRIs. And they have some just amazing ones. And these are like 8K, 16K, completely free to use. You can donate and support them if you want. Uh, feel free to do that. Uh, the one we're going to use today is Sunflowers. And go ahead, we're going to download an 8K HDRI. I'm going to just click download. It's going to download that. I already have it downloaded. So once we have that downloaded, what we can do is we can open up our textures here. We'll go ahead and just grab that HDRI. And either you can open it through here, or if you have it open, you can just drag and drop it in there. And that will work as well. So we're going to open that up. You can see we just have this really nice 8K sky. And then we're going to go ahead and just rotate it around a little bit so our sun is a little bit behind are seen to give us some backlight here. Very, very cool. Next, we're gonna create a landscape. And the only reason we're gonna use a landscape over a plane is because we don't really have a clear horizon line, like you know, it just kind of fades here. And I don't really wanna see that completely. So really, we're just using this to kind of, we're gonna angle it a little lower and we're just gonna break that up a little bit. You can change the C, do whatever you want with this, adjust the furrows. We don't need to do a ton to this. We can add some more segments just so it's a little smoother like that. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go to our top view and we're just going to copy, hold control, click and drag. And we're just going to make one back there and then one back there as well. And for this one, we'll just drag the seeds to something else so they're not identical. And we'll pull that one back and over 
And we just want to break up that horizon line a little bit. We can make these a little taller. There we go. We just don't want, we just want to cover that horizon line up so that we have that nice little bit there. We can lower this one down a bit because we'll be like, we'll be like right here. And if we can make this one actually bigger, we'll say a thousand by a thousand, just so it's nice and big. There we go. Now we just have a little, you know, variation in our background. So it's not so fake looking. Cool. All right. So first thing we can do is we want to create uh, something that we want to clone onto. So let's go ahead and just add some objects here. Uh, we'll go ahead and add like a cylinder and we're just going to add some whatever objects you want to grow things on. And we're going to pull this up and back and we'll go over here, pull it up. And really, this is really up to you for interpretation. This is all just kind of for show. Uh, once you figure out how to do this, you can do all kinds of things. And I'll, I'll cover that in a second. You'll be able to to draw with it, you can letter with it if you know how to letter and stuff like that. You could write fonts with it, text, you could sweep with it, all kinds of cool things. You could grow things on with the object. So we're gonna just go ahead and go through this kind of quickly, just get to the setup part because that's really what you wanna learn. Most of this is really just here, um, just to showcase what this is gonna do and how it's gonna work. So we'll go with the tube and we'll do a little fillet and we'll bring this over and we'll up the segments of both of these. Uh, cylinder will say, 64, tube, we'll say 64 and like 32 for the height. There we go. Okay, and then lastly, I brought in a cool staircase, which is from the asset browser. Staircase, there we go, spiral staircase modular. So we're gonna bring that in. You'll notice it brings in like a null and all these things and there's some espresso down here, which means it's going to be programmable, which is the modular part of this. So let's go ahead and just pull this tube forward and we'll pull this forward. A bit and we can actually pull our whole landscape forward a little bit as well there we go and we could make it bigger if we wanted to but i think we'll be all right i'll we'll spread this out and just kind of frame our stuff up a little better pull our oops make sure you grab the entire staircase and we'll pull that over yeah if you go inside of your staircase and you go down to the knoll that has the espresso tag on it click that and you'll see you have a spiral staircase thing you could actually adjust the height of your staircase and create that up to 500 and we can increase the rotation of it to like 360. And so that's just gonna make it spiral a little bit more. And that's just kind of a cool look for us. So there we go. Pretty cool, we'll pull this up and out of the way a bit. Up, and we'll go ahead and add another sphere. And we just wanna kinda of have this one in the ground. We're just adding objects for stuff to grow on to showcase how easy it is to grow things across multiple objects. So again, we'll say 64. And we'll just bring that down so it's like kind of in the ground like that. Very cool. So let's go ahead and save. Cut, show, grow. All right, shower, not a grow, grow. No, okay, we're, we're growing and showing. All right, that's enough of that. Hey. <laughs> now that I've zoomed out here a little bit, we're gonna take this back landscape and just scale it up a bit and move it back just so it's kind of a little further back there. We can make it a little taller just to cover up that horizon. That's what we're trying to do. Now that we have everything in our scene, it's a little easier to see. So let's go ahead and do that with the other one as well. Bigger, scroll it back, pull it over, T, scale it up and pull that down. We don't want to be like distracting the big. Okay, there we go. Uh, maybe do a different seeds. So we kind of cover that up a bit. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we're covering that up. So let's go ahead and introduce how to bring in Quixel and then scatter it across our scene. So let's go ahead and open up Quixel Bridge. Super cool. The MS Live link is what you need to download. So after watching that tutorial, you should be able to do it. And let's go ahead and just bring in something. We'll go ahead and look for 3D plants. And then we're going to go ahead and look at mm, probably either grass or flowering plants. Let's do flowering plants. And we'll go down here and you can pick one that you like. What I did is I mixed the field poppy with something that I believe was not a flowering plant. Let's go ahead and let's bring in the C thrifts. So we'll go ahead and click that. And when you click this, you'll see it pops it open and it gives you the option of what resolution to download these in. These are like little Dr. Seuss little plants. We're gonna go ahead and just say 4K because we don't need 8K, we're not gonna get that close. It's gonna bring in all these different variations for us and we're gonna download that. Once that's downloaded, we'll be able to click export. So that'll download, you can say okay. And then we'll hit export. So plus button and you'll see it's gonna export to Cinema 4D. And that'll take a second or two, convert that over, and then just give it a few more seconds and it will just pop up in your scene. There we go, pop. And so you can see it just brings in all these variations here. And the first thing I like to do is select all those 
and just group them together just so they're like easier to wrangle. Okay, so we've got all these plants here. You can see it's like all of them stacked together on top of each other, which isn't very useful for us, but that's okay. What we want to do is we want to twirl this down so we can see all of them. We'll bring this down. And what we want to do is we want to create a redshift scatter object. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you do not have redshift, you can use a cloner. If you use a cloner, you're going to need to use multi-instance because they're going to have so many of these that it's going to really have a hard time um, managing it. If you use instance or render instance, it's going to really bog down your scene. But with using multi-instance, if you change it from object to matrix, it should have no problem um, handling the number of stuff in the viewport. So follow along with the cloner if you want, but we're going to use the RS matrix scatter because it just is a little bit faster, and in my opinion. So we're going to click and hold and do the matrix scatter. Does it say Redshift there, but it is Redshift specific. So go ahead and open that up. And for our object, we're going to change the mode to object mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this landscape here, this landscape and bring it into object. And you can see it already sprinkles stuff on there. Now, what are we sprinkling on there? Nothing right now. We need to go to the Redshift object. And we need to change the mode and the particle setting from optimized spheres to custom objects. Now, this is where we can just bring in all of our Quixel assets. Now, the first time you open this, when you click the color picker, it'll let you just keep clicking and clicking and clicking. And the problem is, which we'll see in a little bit here, is the second time you use this, it doesn't stay highlighted for some reason. So we'll, we'll cover that later. But so now we've clicked all of, of our little plants here and we've brought them all in here. We can uncheck our color picker and we want to go down here to distribution and change it from sequential to random. And that way it's just not going to go spread these out in order from here and it's just going to randomize these, which is going to help uh, make this look a little better. So now we can go back to the object tab here and you can see our count is only 20. Let's go ahead and crank that up to something pretty high, like 10,000, which is a lot. But you'll see it creates all these little squares on our ground here. We go ahead and hit render view on this and you'll see our plants might be a little big. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to guess they're going to be pretty big. Um, they're not bad. They're not a bad size. Pretty cool, but you can see there's a lot of patches. So 10,000 seems like a whole lot, um, but it's not. But we're also spreading it out across our entire landscape and we're only looking at it in this tiny chunk. But uh, obviously we don't have it on our stairs or our tube or our back landscapes, obviously um, any of that stuff and we're not controlling it at all. Let's go ahead and bring this down and over. There we go. And let's make our tube just a little bit thinner <laughs> as well now that I'm looking at it. Inner radius, uh, it's fine actually, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay. But you can see that's working, which is nice. So let's go ahead and get something that's a little more just green and fillery. Uh, so again, open up Quixel Bridge. And we're going to go back to our 3D plants. And this time we're going to look at uh, ground cover. There's all kinds of assets here. And let's go ahead and use this wood sorrel. Uh, no, let's use yellow archangel. Ar archangel? Yeah. Use yellow archangel. Again, 4K, download it, export it. This is like a nice, this is a nice wide, you know, wide cover look and as well as some height variation to it. This is what I used in the render that you saw earlier. Let that import. Boom, there they all are again. Once again, we'll group those so we can keep them together. And this time we'll go to our matrix object and you'll see what I'm talking about. When I go to a redshift object and I click the color picker, after I click one, oh, well, it's working. Never mind, it's working. Sometimes it doesn't work. If it doesn't say highlighted, you can actually shift click. Uh, I like to move the matrix object right underneath it and then just shift click after selecting this and it'll select it all, uh, which would be good to go. But we didn't even have to, so perfect. So now when we hit render in here, it's gonna automatically update that for us. And it's gonna sprinkle in those objects with us, with these flowers perfectly. So now we get a little more ground cover and a little flower variation as well. So pretty, pretty cool. Awesome. So now let's talk about how to get this to scatter across all of them. And then we'll talk about how to control that scatter with a field. Okay. So first thing we want to do, very simple fix to control all of these things together. And that is to take all of our objects here. We've got our spiral staircase, sphere, cylinder, our landscapes. And what we're going to do is we're going to click and hold uh, the subdivision surface button and go down to connect. And we're going to take our sphere. And we'll just do our bot, our front landscape, because we don't really need it to scatter across the back ones, because we're not going to do it across those. But uh, spiral staircase all the way down to our landscape and just drag and drop those into our connect object. So now in our matrix object, we can actually just go 
to the object tab here and just actually drag and drop our connect in there. And you can see it sprinkles it across all of our stuff now. Very, very cool. Awesome. So now we have that spreading across our stuff. So let's go ahead and control the amount and some other variables as well to make it look a little more natural and pretty. And you see how 10,000 when spread across all of these objects isn't really very good. And also everything seems to be rotated the wrong way as it always is for whatever reason. Uh, so we need to go to our matrix object, go to transform, and in the P here, the pitch, we're gonna say negative 90. And when we say negative 90, everything is gonna stand up and look correct now. So now we have actually everything actually standing up and looking proper. So that's a quick way to fix that. The P, negative 90, with all the pixel assets, I always have to do this. So that's one step you need to make sure that you do. Everything, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes actually uh, when you have so many things piling up on top of each other, but there we go. And if you ever want um, more of one flower or more of the ground cover, you can you know, obviously go in here and you can come in here to your flower group and start turning off some flowers if you want, like that maybe. But that way there's just less flowers and it'll fill that gap in with more of that ground cover. So we can come in here and turn off a couple more flowers, just holding shift, uh, control and alt to double click those. And now we have, you know, a few more. Let's just turn them all off and just leave two sets of flowers. That way we have more ground cover than flowers and we still have plenty of flowers in here. So pretty, pretty cool. So cool that it updates that fast. Okay, so now let's talk about um, just adjusting this so there's more. We're gonna go ahead to the object and we're gonna up our count to something crazy like, oh, say 200,000. Yeah, and boom. <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, there's so many flowers. Why are my flowers dominating everything so much? Is that just one set of flowers? No, that's two. Two sets of flowers are really dominating that much. Am I turning off the wrong things? I think that's what I'm doing. No, I'm not. Look at all those flowers. What if I turn them all off? Oh my gosh, that was just that one thing of flowers. That looks cool. Just like a topiary. There we go. Turn on that. This one, bear nine log zero, which is level of detail zero, which means they're very high detail. Very cool. Okay. 200,000 looks, I mean, that looks pretty good. It's a nice coverage we've got going on. I mean, everything looks fantastic. Uh, it looks like we could scoot our landscapes back just a bit here. Pull those back over our top view. Seems like they're cutting off our, covering up right underneath our stairs just a bit. There we go. Okay. Cool. So now what we need to do is actually add a little bit of randomness to this so these don't look so uniform. Not that they look that uniform anyway, but let's go ahead and create, make sure we have our matrix tag selected when you do this. Uh, go to MoGraph, Effector, Random. And if you don't have your matrix object selected, um, it's just not gonna throw this in the effectors for you uh, automatically sometimes. So just make sure that inside of your redshift matrix object under your effectors tab, make sure this effector is in there. Okay, and so we're gonna worry about position. Uh, we're only gonna say like two centimeters different on the Y because we don't want stuff like floating off of our scene. And we'll say maybe like 15 and 15, just so they're kind of spread out a little bit, but they're not gonna be like flying off our surfaces and stuff like that. The main thing we want is rotation and we want like 720 in the H. And if you notice, if we look at this, as we rotate this, it's just rotating things around um, like clockwise, which is exactly what we want. That way, everything's not facing the exact same way. And then for our scale, we'll click scale and then uniform scale. And we're gonna change that to like 0.2, just to give us a little bit of size variation. That way everything doesn't look exactly the same. Very cool. All these are, you know, arbitrary settings, do whatever you want. Um, so now we have all that going. So let's go ahead, take a look at this real quick. And then we'll talk about controlling this with fields. And you can just see like ready, already off the bat, super easy. You could do this with text, you could do this with whatever. And so it's pretty cool that it's just one control controls it across all the things. It's looking really neat. Very, very cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and save while we have all this going. And what we wanna do is we want to create a control 
where we can say, all right, I want it to grow from here and then along a path and up here. So let's go ahead and add a MoGraph plane effector. All right, so a plane effector is what we want. And inside of this plane effector, we're gonna go ahead and turn off position because we don't need position. What we do want is scale. And we're gonna check scale, check uniform scale, and we're gonna say negative one. So what this is gonna do is this is going to shrink everything down to zero. So it'll be gone. So if you notice, nothing's happened to our matrix objects here. And that's because in our matrix object, uh, we don't have this plane going. So we need to click and drag and make sure that that is in there. And now you can see everything is scaled down to zero. Uh, one thing I will say is we can go ahead and grab these uh, quick slide objects that we brought in, and just shove them off screen for now because we do not need them. Okay. And we'll bring this over and up just a bit because we've got a little gap there. So now that that's scaled that down to zero, all we need to do is go into the fields. And what we're going to do is you can use whatever field type you want, but we're going to use a spherical field because I think it's pretty easy to understand and understand the fall off and the way it works. So we're going to grab our spherical field and you can see that creates this ball here. And as I grow this sphere, you'll see it's deleting everything where the sphere is. So you can see how this is going to work, but it's working in the opposite way that we want. So all that means is we need to go to here, clip and hold, click and hold clamp and go down to invert and we're going to add an invert tag and now we have this plane effector and a spherical node here that we can control and grow our objects on with a nice fall off that we can control super cool one thing i would say is minimize this because it's incredibly easy to click your spherical field and animate that when really i suggest just animating the plane field um, because it's really easy to start animating one and then animate the other on accident when you click it. And then you have two things that are animated separately and they don't quite work together like you want them to. So just be mindful of what you're actually animating because it can get really tricky. So if we go to our top view here, you'll see as we come in here and move this forward, it's going to grow all that plant stuff on us. And you can see we have this kind of fringe where it's small and then it's full in the middle. So the way we control that is with our spherical field. And we're going to go ahead and go to the, the remap. If you notice here, if we lower this inner strength down, it's going to shrink our smaller. And if we raise it up, it's going to be a harder edge. So if you want to have a hard edge, you're going to raise that inner offset all the way up. If you want to have a nice fall off, you're going to lower it down. So we're going to lower it down to about 40. I think that's pretty good. And so now all we need to do actually is just adjust the size of this. We can go to the field and lower the size of this down to maybe, oh, 100 and maybe bring this back up like so to 56 or so. And so now we're going to go to our plane. And what we're going to do is we're just going to keyframe this. So go back to frame zero and we're going to raise it up and bring it back over our stairs. It's really hard to see what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and change it to quick. That way we can see our staircase here. There we go. And you can see it draw on our stairs. And we want it to be big enough to cover our whole stairs here. So you can animate the size of the sphere. You can do whatever you want. Uh, we'll go ahead and do here. And we'll go to our field. And we'll grow it just a bit. Maybe 200. 150. Seems to be big enough. There we go. And so we can just keyframe that. And we'll go like, we'll say it takes... Two seconds to get down the stairs. So we'll go down the stairs here and go down to here. Keyframe that. And you may notice that it doesn't quite go down there. So there's a couple ways you could do this. We could, you know, we're just going to keyframe it loosely here. Um, no problem. But if you wanted to draw a spline and have like a nice path and all this stuff, you could. Uh, but we'll go ahead and just keep going. And then from here, we're going to want to say take another second. And we'll go out and cover up this, this sphere halfway like so. And then maybe we'll come out and we'll go a little further across the tube. Keyframe that. And then we'll come over here and cover up that cylinder a bit. There we go. And then keyframe that. And that should be good. We can come out a little further past that if we want. Okay, that should be pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. We're gonna hit play. And you see that it's going to move down. Oh, wow. Very, very cool. And obviously that's going to show up on here. But you may notice is that as it moves down, it is disappearing. It's not staying there. Like we have this nice controlled growth, but it's not leaving a path. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do that. So what we want to do 
is we want to go back to our plane effector, go back to our fields, and we need to add one more thing here, and that is to add the decay. So we can add decay on top of this, and we need to switch it to minimum and then set that to 100%. Okay, decay, minimum, 100%. Now when we hit play, it's going to grow those things on and then stay there. So there you go. We've got this nice fall off animation of these things growing on and then they're staying on. So very, very cool. Super fast to render, super fast. You know, the playback's pretty smooth. The fact that we're doing, you know, 200,000 uh, high quality plant objects, it's kind of impressive. So that looks really, really cool. And you can do this with Ivy. You could do this with slime, whatever objects you want, you know, and you could have an object, you know, in your spherical field, have it like as it rolls across, it creates this. You could do all kinds of things by changing up your field, your field and all that stuff. So really, really cool uh, way to do that. Now you could come in here and add like delay uh, possibly and add some spring to it and stuff. But we want to make sure all that is before the decay. We'll see if that kind of helps stuff kind of spring on a little bit. There we go. But we're going to take the delay off for now. But you could animate um, all kinds of stuff that springing on, curling on, whatever you want to do. You can animate the object that you're, you know, doing. Very, very cool. You could have like, let's go ahead. Actually, let's do that. I just want to see what it's going to look like. Let's take all of these plants and we're going to add a wind to it. Oh, God. We're going to add a wind to it. Shift, hold wind okay and for all this wind we're going to say like an amplitude of like five and a scale of five and a frequency down let's just see i don't know if we'll be able to see what that looks like this are where are our objects here let's take a look at what that wind is doing to our plants Yeah, so it's just making it blow in the wind a little bit, which is nice. Let's go ahead and do that on our flower that we have in here as well. We'll shift, release, we'll say like 10 and 12. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. So there's going to be kind of moving in the wind just a little bit, just to give it some animation. I think that's going to look really nice when we get it all on there. Cool. Get back to our overall scene here. We're going to grab this landscape and bring it down. It's kind of raised above a little bit. Let's bring that down. Okie dokie. So now we've got stuff moving. We've got stuff growing on. Scale that up a bit. Let's go ahead and scale this back one up a bit as well. Yep, we can bring it down. Nice. Okay. So we've got things growing, moving. Very cool, complex scene. It's coming on. And we're good to go. Now, all we have to do is when you go, uh, we could add some textures to this. What we did, what I did was I added um, some surface and I did uh, rock or ground. I think I did like a dry ground. But you can do whatever kind of a ground you want. It will look good with, um, I thought it looked good to have a really dry ground to have grass and stuff grow out of it. So surfaces. Uh, canyon dry mud as well. Let's go ahead and download that. Okay, so for the canyon dry, we're going to just click and drag that onto our landscapes. Uh, it's not going to go on our landscape because it's in a connect object. We need to make sure we drag that down actually onto our landscape here. And we're going to control click each of these because they need to be tiled because our objects are so big. Our UV mapping is stretched out because we just scaled it up. So let it think as it brings in this new pixel material. There we go. Control, click, control, click. And we're going to say like tile six, maybe. I want to see what that looks like down here. And really, you need to always check it in the render view because just for whatever reason, the actual textures in the viewport never really quite match. But that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. And so now we can take the other Canyon Dry, which is very, very similar, but different enough. And we can throw that on our sphere and our tube. I control click dragging, and we're not going to worry about displacement and stuff for these just because we don't really need to. There we go. Okay. Let's just put this dry texture on everything. We'll go to our landscape and we'll tile it up just a little bit. Maybe like 
three. And if you ever want to enable the displacement values that come with these things, uh, it will create the redshift object tag for you. So we'll, but it won't actually override it. So just turn that on and it should pop up with the right settings. Uh, you might need to adjust these and these as well, but you should be all right. But yeah, there we go. Now we've got this nice ground growing. We've got a, our background back there. We can go ahead and add a few more tiles to these. But yeah, pretty cool. So now all I will say is if you come in here and you go to like frame 160, let's say you're rendering this out and you have to stop halfway through and you want to restart it, you have to, this is a weird, I don't know if it's a bug or what, but there's no way to like bake this um, in, but don't worry, you don't have to render it from the beginning every time. You just need to come back into your timeline and hit play from zero up to the point where you want to start from. So for whatever reason, uh, it won't fill in the gaps uh, previously, but as long as you play up to the point where you want to render from, you'll be good to go. So let's say you render overnight, just to be clear, and you got up to frame 120 done, and you closed C4D, and you came back into it, and you wanted to pick up where it left off, you need to push play and let it go all the way up to 120 before resuming that render from 120 on, okay? Otherwise, it just won't have any of these animation previously. But let's take a look at what we've got going on here. And we'll go ahead and click Redshift Render View. And we should have a pretty nice looking scene. Boom. So cool. There you go. That's how you can grow it on. Now, obviously, our sphere is a little high. If we wanted to, um, we could come in here and for the animations of it, which again, you know how I said, uh, animate the plane and not the sphere. Well, I animated the sphere thinking I was animating the plane. It's just easy to do, um, but just pay attention to which one you're doing. When we get uh, to here, I think what I'm gonna do is animate the plane separately. Keyframe where it is before. And as I go up, we're just gonna slide this down so it pulls our sphere down. So we have sort of 100% in the ground here. Okay, and so now when we come across here, it's going to grow a little more uh, plant life for us there, full size. But yeah, there you go. So now what you could do, obviously, is you could create like a redshift camera. Um, you could go into it and we could fly in here and look at this like, like so and get like close to it as it's growing on, right? Pretty cool. And what we could do is we could like drop that into our sphere object here. So now when we hit play, our camera's just gonna follow along as that grows, which is gonna be a pretty cool effect. And obviously we could add some different field and stuff to this. So, you know, keep in mind, there's all kinds of cool ways that you could use this to do all kinds of stuff. You could write things on, you can just do all, all kinds of things and everything looks really nice and good. Obviously the ground looks kind of funny on this, but there you go. You get the idea and you have the an understanding of how the plants and things will work. So obviously you could come near, and if you ever want to, um, we'll get this out of there, uh, swap things out, as it's literally as easy as swapping out in the Redshift Matrix object. Very cool, awesome. So hopefully you guys found that uh, easy to follow and do really cool way to control that. You could use different fields. You could just use a noise and animate it and have it just stuff growing and shrinking all over the place. There's all kinds of ways to apply this. And it's really cool to do it across multiple materials with one control, no vertex maps or anything like that needed for this. And you can animate how it goes on very, very simply. So it's very cool. If you like this tutorial, found it helpful, um, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and comment below. Thank you guys so much for all the support. It means a lot. Um, I am still working on the Mind in Motion workshop that is coming along very nicely. It's, it's going to be awesome. And also, all right. So if you want to render out an animation, obviously you go to the render settings. And, you know, basically if you're going to use an animation and you're going to do a uh, denoiser, um, I suggest using Alta Single. You don't have to use optics, but if you do, regardless, whatever you do, you want to go to the advanced tab and you want to uncheck random noise pattern. And that's going to get rid of a lot of that flickering um, for your thing. So you just want to make sure you go to your output and you'll just say all frames and then you're good to go. Save it wherever you want. You know how to do that. And that's all you need. And you're good to go. So if you have to quit it or anything, come back to it. Remember, just hit play 
because like I said here, if I come up here and I just go to frame 128, you'll see all that stuff in between. It just doesn't load it in. So you just have to play it through up to that point. I don't know why, but it's weird, but that's how you got to do. So I was like, oh my gosh, are you telling me I have to render from the beginning to the end every time? But no, you just have to play it through on the timeline. So that's good. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. See you next time.